Now, we have four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew presents Jesus as a king of the Jews. Luke presents him as the physician. John presents him as the word made in flesh, but Mark presents him as the willing servant. Now, when we look at Mark's Gospel, it doesn't give a long genealogy of Jesus, but it just shows the movements of Jesus. Now, when we look at Mark's Gospel, it is showing him as the loving servant and miracle worker. I understand that he is a miracle worker. According to Webster's Dictionary, a miracle is a wonderful and amazing event that is caused by the power of God. You see, he is a divine healer. Amen. Now we must understand the purpose of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. One of the purpose of Jesus Christ was to come down to earth. But he did not come down to be an arrogant king. Amen. He came down to meet the needs of the people. You see, God the Father set this up. He said, I need somebody to go down to save humanity. So Jesus said, I'll go. He came all the way down to earth to reach the lost, the broken, the rejected, and the abused. Amen. Now Jesus took the position of a humble servant to help those in need. We understand that as we look in these four Gospels, Jesus is the prime example of a loving servant. Yes, now, as we look in the passages that we have read, Jesus goes to Simon's house. You see, now Jesus in Scripture always visit the homes of families of who minister with him. So he had a special love and care for family. Everyone was happy when Jesus was in the house. Amen. You see, I'm so glad that when Jesus came to my house, he came with open arms of love. Amen. Everyone say, Jesus is wonderful. You see, what I love about God is that he, took, he takes time to be with his loving sheep. You see, Jesus did not stick his nose up at people, but he showed them great love. You see, he understood that no person is too poor or unimportant for Jesus to help. Jesus cares for all of us. We realize that as we wake up this morning, we have life in our body. We have breath. We have strength to walk because he loves you so much and he has a purpose for your life. Amen. Now, we must understand that there is a big issue happening. As Jesus is in the house, now we must understand before this, he was in the synagogue teaching. So according to the Sabbath, after he finished teaching, he was going to someone's house. But as he comes to someone's house, he realized that something was tragic. Simon's mother-in-law was sick with a fever. Now this fever in first century Palestine was not like the ones of today. It was very deathly and sickly. Now, during this time, there wasn't any prescription. We didn't have, they didn't have any aspirin or Advil. But we understand that Peter's mother-in-law was deep in her sickness. How many of you have been deep in something that was holding you down? Amen. Now, we realize that as she was deep in her sickness, there was no physicians around. You see, when we look at this text, we cannot look at it with just plain eyes. We have to really dig deep into it. Now, some would say they didn't have a solution. In today's era, we have many doctors. People look for Dr. Oz. People look for Dr. Phil, but they cannot help you. Everyone say, we need a healer. Now we realize in verse 30, she's laying down in her sickness. Now according to first century custom, it is the honor for the leading lady of the home to prepare the meal, to serve the meal when guests are present. Now you know when we have Thanksgiving and we have people come over and things of that nature, we have to have meals prepared for them to come. I remember one time I went to someone's um church event and after service they said oh um we were going to eat i said where's the food they said oh uh, we didn't cook i said why oh we didn't have enough time i said well i said i guess that's not going to work for me so i realized that i was accustomed to every time i went to an event there was going to be food you know my mom she would laugh because every time i asked her oh we going to church i said yeah food she said no i said okay i'm not going you know but <laughs> 
I realized that Peter's mother-in-law was supposed to prepare something, but she was sick, and that she was unable to follow the protocol. You see, moments like this, when we are sick or we're dealing with something, it's hard for us to function. I remember 12 years ago when I, um, four years ago when I was diagnosed in 2012, and it was hard for me to try to wrap my mind around it, trying to figure out what am I supposed to do, how am I going to figure this out, and it was hard for me to realize that Jesus was right there. And as she is in the house, we must understand that she's laying down sick, but then Jesus is in the house. You see, many people don't realize that the solution is in the house. You see, I want everyone to say, and he came to her. Now, verse 31 says, and he came to her and took her by the hand. Now, we must understand something. Now, whenever we feel sick or whenever we feel down, we go to someone. You see, but Jesus comes to us. You see, he came to her when she was deep in her trouble. Yes. He came to us when we were deep in our trouble. Yes. You see, but we serve a mighty God Amen. who is able to come to us. Yes. You see, many people try to go and find solutions outside in the world. You see, but I cannot find a solution to my problem. Yes. But I must go to the problem solving. His name is Jesus. Amen. Now, we must understand, according to Jewish customs, Touching anyone would be rendered unclean. Now, most rabbis of this time would not have touched her. They would have looked at her and said, she's sick, we can't touch her. But Jesus touches the untouchable. You see, he looks at her and said, I don't care about the rules of what I'm supposed to do. But Jesus said, I love her so much that I'm going to touch her. Aren't you glad that when you were sick, Jesus touched you? You see, he touched her, and she was healed immediately. You see, it didn't take a long time. It didn't take an hour. But God said, I'm going to touch her, and she's going to be healed. You see, once God touches you, you're going to be healed. Once God touches your situation, you're going to be healed. God is a healer. Now, we must understand that healing comes when Jesus is at the right moment and at the right time. You see, we must understand that healing can happen. I know that doctors, they say one thing and doctors say another. We must trust in the name of Jesus. His name brings healing. His name brings freedom from whatever's holding you down. We must understand that as he touched her, she was healed and she began to serve the house. You see, after Jesus touched you, you can serve him. You see, she teach, she was touching, she was serving, not out of, this is what I have to do. I'm doing this as a gift of thanksgiving. You see, I'm so happy that he gave me the gift of life, so I'm going to serve him. I'm going to walk into my calling. I'm going to walk into my purpose. You see, the solution was in the house. You see, many people don't understand that Jesus is the one that can heal them. Now, I know that we have different ideologies and we have philosophies and we have different people believing in so many things. But we must believe in the name of Jesus. We must trust in him. I know when people put their hope in other things, people put hope in the Democratic Party and put hope in the Republican Party. But my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. All Christ, the solid rock, I stand. He is the firm foundation. I remember someone asked me a question. I was um, in high school at the time. And my nickname, they called me Preacher. I I love that nickname when they called me. But um, at the time, they asked me, they said, what do you preach? And I stood up and I said, I preach Jesus Christ. And they said, what do you mean by that? I said, I preach about a man who saved me when I was young. You see, I remember when I was about maybe six years old, and I heard my grandfather preach a sermon. And he was talking about this compassionate love that Jesus Christ had. And when he said this, he said, does anybody want to be saved? And I remember one Sunday I got up and went to the front. But I didn't get up out of religion. I didn't get up out of, of trying to do the churchy thing. But I did it because I wanted to know this love that he kept on preaching about. 
and understand this, that many times we go through so many things, but we must understand that our Savior loves us. Amen. He loves you so much that he was able to come down to earth and serve humanity. Amen. You see, he showed us how to, how to be a servant. You see, many times, and people don't realize this, the reason why churches are failing is not because the preacher is not preaching a good sermon or the membership is not happening. It's because the pastors don't know how to touch anymore. They don't know how to touch members. They don't know how to love and talk to them. I remember when I was young, my grandfather would, every time um, he finished preaching, somebody would say, oh, pastor, let me talk to you. And this and that, he'd say, son, just give me one second, let me talk to them. And he took the time to talk and touch people. Amen. You see, true ministry is not in the pulpit. It's touching people and giving Jesus to them. Amen. Now, I want to give you some closing thoughts on one of my favorite hymns. Now, when I was reading this hymn, I truly understood how, uh, what I was feeling when I was in the hospital. As I was in the hospital recently, I was reading, I was reading the lyrics and it was encouraging me as I was going through the IVs and it was testing me and running through this and so many things. This hymn is entitled, Love Lifted Me. I just want to give some commentary on it and I'll... Uh, finish right here the first part says I was sinking deep in sin now we must understand that all of us have were well, going through a sinking deep in, in sin part now we must let me explain that part we all have been sinking sometimes we sometimes our faith level is on low and we don't know what to do and we're far from the peaceful shore as we're sinking, we're far away from where we're supposed to be. And then the next lyric says, very deeply stained with sin. Sinking to rise no more. So I realize that I'm drowning in my mess. I'm drowning in my sickness. I'm drowning in my stuff. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. So I'm sinking. I messed up. I'm down in my sickness. Yeah. I'm down and I don't know what to do. Uh -huh. And I'm sinking and I'm, I'm crying and I'm streaming, but he heard my cry. Yeah. He heard me when nobody else heard me. Yeah. He heard me when people pushed me aside. Yeah. When they say you'll never be nothing. Yeah. When they say you're a loser. Yeah. When they said you're not going to make it. But then he heard my cry. Yeah. He heard me. Yeah. Look at your neighbor say he heard me. He heard me. From the waters. Lifted me. Amen. So now he he's the lifeguard that goes deep down in my sin yeah. and picks me up. Yeah. And now safe am I. Yeah. Love lifted me. Yeah. For God so loved the world yeah. that he gave his only begotten son. Yeah. Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, yeah. but have everlasting life. Yeah. You see, many people don't understand that. We look for love outside, but love comes from a loving Savior. Yes. It comes from a Savior who says, I'm going to come down from heaven yes. and save humanity. Yes. You see, we must understand something. That Jesus was up in heaven. And he puts on human flesh and comes yes. down to us. Yes. Yes. And he sits and dwells with us. He's the same God who picks you up and turns you around. Yes. You see, this is a mighty loving Savior. Yes. You see, what I love about God is that he takes our dirtiness yeah. and he washes us with blood. Yes. He cleanses us yes. and he makes us better. Yes. What a mighty God we yes. serve. Yes. I'm so glad that he loved me when no one else loved yes. me. Yes. He loved me and put me and said, you're my child. Yes. You see, the Bible says, come unto me, all the live, and I will give you rest. When we come to him, we have peace in our lives. Yes. You see, I know that we have these 12-step programs and how to be a better you, but I want to be in his presence. Amen. You see, I don't want to be somewhere having what society says is success and I don't have him. You see, I must have Jesus. Yes. I don't want anything else. I don't want millions of dollars. I don't, you know, I don't want a Rolls Royce, but I want Jesus. Yes. 
And you see, many people don't understand that they must die to themselves. And they must come humbly and say, Lord, I need you. You see, I want to encourage someone this morning. I want to encourage you to always keep your prayer life strong. You see, many people don't understand that it took so much strength for me to even get up this morning and I know who my God is. I'm confident in my Savior. I know no matter what I go through, He will bring me out. He is a loving Savior. I'm so glad that He loves us, He cherishes us, He keeps us, and He pushes us to where we need to be. Always look to Jesus. I know many people preach about, you know, motivation and all this stuff, but we need to preach Jesus Christ. We must understand that He loves us. He's going to be there for you. No matter what you go through, God will be right there.